Hey, hey. <laughs> Welcome. It is Tuesday. Can you believe it? I'm doing Tune Up Tuesday on Tuesday. I call that progress. Last week, I, I, I was a whole day late, but we still, we still showed up. Better late than never, some, some will say. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Tune Up Tuesday, my friends. It is my, uh, one of my COVID challenge, quarantine living uh, lifestyle adjustments I've done to keep the creative powers high and to change up the routine and to find a way to make the best of a, of a modified situation. Hey, Aaron. Hey, brother. Um, so you had a big event earlier this week. I think it was this weekend. I'm sure it went well. You're a rock star out there. Well, hey, guys. Welcome to Tune Up Tuesday. <clears throat> this is when I, I uh, try to show up on a weekly basis, share some insight and perspective gathered along the way, along the journey. Um, and I pull from a lot of different experiences. Hey, Daphne, welcome to Tune Up Tuesday. And for those of you that are frequent visitors, you know that I'm better this week. It's actually Tuesday. <laughs> Last week I did uh, Tune Up Tuesday. I think it was a Wednesday edition. But uh, I still showed up, though. I still came. I still showed up, right? So today I'm actually going to talk about... Um, uh, the moment that I have now come to call, <laughs> right? Always reflective. But the moment I come to now identify as the moment where I really came to understand the awesome, the awesome and amazing power of motivation. And it actually happened to me, um, as most things do in, in life, kind of by accident, right? It was not a design thing, but uh, the result of it was profound and was overarching and reaching throughout my life. It fundamentally changed who I was as a person, um, how I viewed life, my core underlying philosophies, if you will. And um, it also made me lean forward into the, the world of being, you know, lit up and inspired and going for it, whatever you want to call that whole kind of mindset. I, re I remember where it kind of was born in my life, right, in a big way. And it happened um, a couple of decades ago when I was when I was much younger than I am now. But the 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 impact it had on me was profound, and um, <clears throat> it was many many years. In fact, it was probably more than a decade before I even shared the story. And the story just came out. I forgot what we were talking about motivation, and it just clicked. And I shared the story, and it, and it seemed to to help a lot of people with perspective. So. From time to time, I tell the story. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to tell a story <clears throat> about how I came to know the awesome, amazing, magical power of motivation. Hey, Jimmy, welcome to Tune Up Tuesday. So this this happened to me. Um, I was probably, I'm going to say, 19 or 20. And uh, for those of you that kind of know my background, I was in the military twice. I was enlisted in the Navy, and I was an officer in the Marine Corps. This was during the Navy part, right? So I was stationed on an amphibious ship in San Diego. And um, if you ever see those ships that hit the beach and open up the front, open ups, and all the Marine rolls run out and the LAVs come out and all of that stuff, I was on one of those. It was an LST. And one thing that's unique about an LST that allows it to go all the way up to the beach is that the bottom is relatively flat compared to other ships. So we rock a lot, right? It's just a rocky experience. And uh, we were going through an overhaul at the time. I was enlisted, undesignated at the time. Just means I was just kind of enlisted, working, doing the hard labor work on a, on a ship. A sailor. I was a sailor man. <laughs> and we were going through this overhaul to prepare to go overseas. And it was just very, very tough. I mean, we would... We would leave port, leave the beautiful San Diego port on a Sunday afternoon and not come back into port until late on Friday night. And being that I was in deck division, um, we had to work on the weekend. So even though we pulled back into the, the beautiful port of San Diego, we were still stuck on the ship for most of it, right? We might get a couple of hours, we could get out in town. And, and we were going through this routine 
you know, week after week after week after week. I mean, it was exhausting. And then one day, um, my officer came out and asked, you know, all of the people who wanted to go to pilot rescue swimming school. Pilot rescue swimming school. Now, if you don't know who those people are, if you've ever seen the movie, I think there was a movie about, what's the guy named that was married to Demi Moore? I can't think of his name, but he was the star. The guy um, from the 70s show, like uh, uh, Kushner, uh, Ashton something. Anyway, he plays one of these people, pilot rescue swimmers. These are the people that when a plane goes down at a storm at sea, these are the guys that jump on a helicopter, fly into the storm, fly out to where the wreck the plane is, jump out of the helicopter into the stormy ocean and rescue the pilot. So these are fish, right? These are literally aquamen. Now, a couple of things on my background. Back then, I was very, very thin, right? Very, I had no buoyancy. Growing up as a kid, I could sit on the bottom of a swimming pool. I wasn't afraid of water, and I took swimming lessons and you know, loved the water, could swim, but I was just a moderate swimmer at best, right? But then the officer came out and said, okay, who wants to go to pilot rescue swimming course? And I was, uh, and we was like, well, when is it? Cause you know, we're doing this whole workup thing, going out to sea on Sunday, coming back on Friday. When could you go? He said, well, for the people that go to the school, we would have to leave them behind on shore while we're out at school for the week. And the, the, the class was like a three day class. So I do the math in my mind, right? And I'm like, and okay, if I go to this school, even though I probably don't swim well enough to finish this school, they would have to leave me behind. The ship would be gone. I would probably fail out of the school like in the first five minutes and then I'd be stuck on shore for a whole week while the ship was out doing all the hard uh, workup stuff, right? So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I raised my hand and volunteered. And he was like, um, seaman man, I think I was a seaman at the time. He's like, seaman man, can you... You want to go to pilot rescue swimming school? I'm like, yes, sir, absolutely. And he was like, can you swim? Absolutely, I can swim. <laughs> now, I couldn't swim well, but yeah, I could swim. So he's like, all right. So long story short, my plan is coming together because they sure they leave me behind and they go to sea. And that, that, that Monday or whatever, I show up at this pilot rescue swimming school, right? And it's like a small class of about 20 people. And we're at this pool and, you know, the way it works is they give you, the first part of it is that you just have to make sure that you're good enough to be there, right? So um, they give you a time, you have to jump in the pool and they tell you to stroke, like side stroke or breast stroke or whatever it is. And you have X amount of time, a couple of minutes, right, to do X amount of laps. I don't remember the exact number, but let's just say four laps in two minutes or whatever it is. So... We all line up and we all jump in and we all go, right? So we're all swimming and swimming, swimming. And like I said before, right? Moderate swimmer. And these guys are, you know, these were swimmers. These were, these guys were, were ultimate swimmers, right? So obviously shoot out way ahead of me. And right, I'm still going, I'm still going. I'm falling behind, falling behind. And they, they're they getting out of the pool, resting and stretching because they're done and I'm still just trying to make it in before the, the clock runs out. And I barely make it to the side of the pool before the time's up, right? So as soon as I get out of the pool, it's the second one. Okay, this time we do the side stroke. It's, it's another one, right? I'm, they're all rested. I'm still tired from just barely making it, right? So basically go. So I'm jumping right back in. And now I'm back in and I'm running out of gas, right? And I'm getting, it's harder to go. And I'm even further behind now, right? So people are done, they, they zoom in by, they're doing their laps, they're lapping me literally in the pool, right? <laughs> and these guys are done, wait, and I'm falling further and further and further behind. And then I'm thinking to myself, man, don't they know I don't belong here? Can't, can't they see that they should, you know, be kicking me out by now? Because remember I had a plan, right? I wasn't supposed to be there. I knew I couldn't swim well enough. But then the people were out the pool, right? And I'm so far behind, I'm still trying to just beat the clock and I'm still swimming along the way. And this is when the magic started to happen and everything started to go sideways on me because a strange and amazing thing started to happen. I was in there swimming, trying to make it, just trying to make it. And the people on the outside of the pool, they started to cheer for me. They were like, come on, 
you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh man, what are they doing, right? What are they cheering for me for? I'm not supposed to be here, right? I'm not good enough to be here. So I'm swimming and I'm swimming and they're cheering and they're cheering. And then, and then some, some interesting things start to happen. Some profound things started to happen to me. Because although I went there to get kicked out, to fail, right? Because I was just trying to avoid going to see. But something weird started to happen when all of these people were literally cheering for me to finish, to, to make it in this thing. Cheering for me to finish, cheering, come on, you can do it, come on, you can do it. And I'm like, okay, so I just, I just keep going, I keep going, and once again, I barely make it to the side of the pool with, you know, a half a minute or not much time left in the time minute before, guess what? We got to go do it again and we got to do a, no, a whole nother stroke. And now I'm, su I'm super tired, right? I'm super tired, but when I made it, everybody was like, yeah, we knew, you know, they cheered for me making it. And then again, they said, go, this time we're doing the next stroke. I don't know what it was, breaststroke or whatever. We had X amount of time, but now I'm, I'm super tired, right? Because it works. It's hard for me to swim. My technique is bad. I'm just out there. And again, they way out ahead of me. They, they lapping me in the pool and I'm going. And then I started to just kind of play this out in my mind. I started to get outside of myself and, and look at what was going on. And I realized something instantly. I realized that although I came there today to quit on myself, I then came here today with the plan to be to fail. Uh, that was the whole reason for coming, right? But I also realized that for whatever reason, for whatever reason, it was it was I couldn't really quit on the people that were cheering for me. And now, again, I'd fallen so far behind that people were out of the pool, and they were again, "Come on, cheering for me! You can do it! Come on, you can make it! Come on!" And then I realized that man, I'm struggling, right? I'm I'm getting exhausted. And then I realized that there are at least five lifeguards around the pool. In the pool watching us, the instructors themselves, they had a couple on the little chair tower things, you know, the lifeguards looking in. But I guess because, you know, safety factors, right? And it being the Navy, right? But they had like five five instructors around the pool. And, and, I, and I make the decision, true or not, I make the decision or I come to the understanding that there's no way possible I could drown in this pool today. There are too many lifeguards. There are too many, there's just too many people to save me, right? And then I make another even bigger decision. I make the decision that I can't quit. I can't quit on these people that are cheering on me. And I'm, I'm just gonna have to go to the point of exhaustion. I'm just gonna have to drown today. I'm having this conversation in my head. I'm, being, I'm just gonna have to drown today. So, I'm like, no matter what, I'm going to just do this. I know I'm not good enough to be here, but I also know it's not in me to quit on them that are rooting for me like that. So I'm going to have to just, just drown. So I keep swimming. I keep swimming. And sure enough, it's getting incredibly hard, incredibly hard. My arms and I'm beaking and I'm starting to go under, right? And, and I'm starting to drink water and people are cheering. Come on, you can do it. I mean, literally, yes, come on, you can do it. Come on, you can make it, swim, you can do it. And the clock's ticking and I'm starting to swim and I'm fatiguing and I'm going up and trying to get air and I'm trying to breathe and I'm trying to swim and I'm choking on water and then panic sets in. Panic is a real thing, folks. I don't care how mentally disciplined you are. When you panic in water, it's a funny thing about that. Panic sets in, survival sets in, and you find, and I find myself going, like trying to get to the edge of the pool, right? Because I know I'm running out of gas, and no, I'm not gonna make it. I know I've made the decision to drown, but my body's trying to override that decision. And then the instructor's like, get away from the side of the pool, swim. And I'm swimming, and I'm going, and I push myself way out into the middle of the pool so I can't get to the side of the pool, and I know I'm gonna drown. And I'm trying to swim, and I'm trying to go, and everybody's cheering for me. You can do it, you can make it, come on, you can do it. And I'm drowning, and I'm, I'm literally starting to drown in my mind. And I'm gulping water, and, I'm, and it gets to the fact where I can't even, I'm so exhausted, I know I can't make it, I probably can't get to the side, the people are yelling at me to swim, and then finally, everybody's saying, come on, you can do it, you can make it. And then finally, the instructor's like, man, man. And you know, I, 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 he probably was calling me for a couple of seconds, right? Because I'm so fixated on trying not to drown now. He's like, you know, he calls me to the side of the pool. And he says, um, he says, hey, here's the deal. You can't swim. 
their technique sucks. But I've talked to the other instructors and we like your heart. We like your heart. And if you go away and take some lessons, improve your technique, we will actually allow you to come back. And this is normally a one-shot deal. You come, you pass, or you don't come, or you don't pass. But we like what we like your spirit, and we will let you return. But now, for now, you need to get the hell out of my pool. And he made me get out. And I was so exhausted that I couldn't get out. I got to the edge of the pool, and, and those, those same people that were cheering for me had to kind of pull me out, lift me out of the pool. And when I got out of the pool, and as I walked into the locker room, failing, getting kicked out, they literally stood there and were clapping. Like, damn, clapping for me. And that whole ordeal changed me. It, it changed me. It changed me more l later in life as I reflected back on it, kind of like I'm doing now. But I, it dawned on me just a lot of things that I think are intrinsic to the magic of motivation that became obvious to me in the pool, that there's something magical that happens when you allow yourself to go all in. I mean, literally, I was going all in. I was willing to drown that day in my mind. I was, I was willing to drown that day. I was, that's all in as I could be. But when you go all in, change shows up. You know, it was magical change. I changed. I changed in the moment. I changed in that moment to being a little bit somebody that I had not been. I was not the person that made this crazy plan to come here to get kicked out, this crazy selfish plan to come here and fail so I could have a week without being XC. I, be, I was in the moment somebody different. I was in the moment somebody willing to act on something greater than myself. And what I was acting on was the admiration and cheering for people that I didn't even freaking know. You know, and that's another thing, that, another insight into that moment. The change that happened in that moment in the pool didn't just happen in me. It happened in everybody at the pool. Those people didn't wake up that day knowing that they were going to be cheering for some stranger that wasn't good enough to be where they were. Something, I connected with some part of them that, that made them want to cheer for me. I don't remember a single name at anybody else at that pool, nor could they tell you my name nor could they tell you who I was. But they were a part of a life-changing moment. I ignited a life-changing moment for myself. They were participants in this whole thing that was going down. And they don't even know who I was. They didn't, that wasn't a plan of theirs. They had no idea why were they, they were cheering for me, in my opinion, why they, they started to cheer for me because that tenacity, that, that, that ability to go all in is in everybody. And when people see it, it awakens in themselves and they recognize it and they're moved by it. They were moved to cheer for this strange little skinny kid trying to freaking survive in the pool. And they were cheering. I mean, clapping and cheering. And that was a, that was a mind altering moment for me just, I, I don't know that I've ever had ever made a conscious decision to be all in about anything in a physical way like that. In a way, another thing that was real about that moment that I think is real about the moments in the rest of our lives, including yours, is these moments are often accompanied face to face with uncomfortableness, discomfort, and downright pain or fear. I was sum literally submerged in fear to the point where I couldn't almost control my actions. I was, my body was taking me to the side of the pool because it was trying to survive the moment. It knew that I could not survive the moment. It knew that I was going to drown. It knew, and it was overrising. It was a battle between my survival instincts and my will, my will to be this person that I didn't even know I was prior to that moment in that day. I didn't even, I didn't wake up that person that I was now, that person in the pool. 
That moment had awakened up a different person. And the will of that person was in an all out freaking battle with fear. And it was visceral. It was something I could feel. I could feel my body trying to survive and I could feel my will trying to not give in to that. Ah, it was a powerful, powerful moment in that pool. It was a powerful, powerful moment in that pool. And another thing I realized about motivation is that when you, when you, when you are motivated and you go all in, sometimes the intent, the original intent is modified or evolves or disappear or changes into something else. Because my original intent for going to that pool hadn't, was to get out of something, was laziness, was to avoid something I just didn't want to do. I had no idea that the universe had this big plan. Okay, okay, you think you're smart. You think you're going to use your cleverness to be lazy. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that decision make your make you realize and ultimately become the out the opposite of laziness the opposite of trying to avoid what you don't like we're going to put you in a situation to become the very upside down inverted reflection of who you think you are because who you are in that moment is not you That's what I get out of my moment in the pool. Because to this day, two decades later, I am more that person that stepped out of the pool than I am the person that made the decision to go to the pool. I am much more the person that stepped out of there. I get it. I got it. And from that point forward, I had a different relationship with this idea of being motivated, being all in, finding a way to be inspired, facing that fear, nose the freaking nose, eyeball to eyeball. Because I think what happens is, and I think the research would bear this out, is I think the layman's way of saying it is, when you face your fear, the fear goes away. Well, thanks to my lazy intent and the universe's cleverness outdoing my cleverness, it put me face to face with, with survival fear. And it, it completely, it was a rewrite of my operating system. It was a complete rewrite of my operating system. So, I walked out of that pool, I walked out of that situation understanding that motivation matters. And one of the biggest things I take away from motivation is when you are truly motivated and you give in to it and you go all in, if we want to call it that, multiple three things change. And these are three things that might not change in the absence of motivation. You change. You change. Say that again. You change. And that's what most people assume. But here's the thing. People around you change. People around you change. People around you change. People you know and people you don't know. I gave an example where people around me were all strangers and they changed in that moment. And here's the nuance I get. Your change and their change is synergistic. They're coherent. They're in harmony of this place you're headed. One plus one is five. It increases the moment. So you change. People change. And when that happens, your definition of reality, your definition 
of what is happening, your definition, what you define the moment to be, also changes. It also changes. And when all those three things change, your world has changed. Literally, the reality of your world has changed. So I like sharing that story now, and it still gets me, my emotions get into it a little bit, because I, like a little five minutes ago, when I was in that pool in the story, I felt myself going back in that pool physically, and I felt the immersion store. I felt the, woo! I felt that, 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 in, that, that fire inside flame up, flame up, and it's like fear and anger and all kind of stuff. It's this, it's this gumbo of possibility that's just freaking delicious, man. It, ah, it's good stuff, man. I'm, fucking, I'm freaking motivated right now just by getting my mind there. And I tell that story to hopefully intrigue you, some cases, motivate a smaller group of people that might come across this random conversation and inspire even a smaller group of people to find something. Pick something if you don't have something. Just see what the magic feels like to be all in. See what it feels like to dive all in. Just see what it feels like to absolutely freaking take the barriers off and freaking go for it. Just go for it. And it isn't even the point. The going is the point. Becoming the person that can go is the point. And sometimes you just have to pick some arbitrary thing and go for it so you can become the person that goes for it because that's what I want you to feel. The going for it, not the it. The it is arbitrary. There are gonna to be tons of it's you can go for once you know, once you know who you are. And once you feel that thing in your bloodstream that I'm talking about. Once those once that stuff gets in you and lights you up and you you look at the world with the eyes of that greater person, that greater version of you. Once you become that avatar of your greater self, once you realize that you can demand and create and change the board that you're walking through, once you realize that your own simple act of motivation can change your world, some of you are gonna be inspired to do that more than one time. You're not gonna just do it once and, and come away out of that and be like, wow, that was awesome, but I'm not gonna take that ride again. No, you're going to be like a kid that just rolled a roller coaster. That's the funnest thing they ever did. You're going to be like, holy crap, I'm doing that shit again. And some of you are never going to stop doing it. Ever. The most powerful people we know in this life, they do it over and over and over and over again. And each and every time, there's this unique mix of uncertainty and fear and doubt and, and all of that because that's the ingredients of the mix. That's what it takes. I'm going to leave you with this. You know, a lot of times, and I've been through a lot of leadership training courses. I've been through a lot of st structured leadership training. OCS being a huge part of that. A lot of I'm gonna learn a lot of stuff in Marine Corps Officer Candidate School. It's a bitch, but you learn a lot. And I've been a 20 year startup entrepreneur, like from the ideal napkin entrepreneur. So I draw, and, and I draw from a lot of disciplines, right? I draw from martial arts and sports and psychology, sociology, the whole area of biohacking, all that stuff. But I will tell you this, if you wanna know what I call the secret to motivating a team, a lot of people, will always want to know, I can't seem to motivate my team. I can't find a way to motivate other people. And I think I have the, I think I have the master key to that. And it's a simple one. The key, to being mo the key to motivating your team is for you to stop trying to be motivating and for you to just find ways to be more motivated. More motivated. 
the act of you being motivated, the ripple effect that in the eyes and the minds and the, action, and the actions of others is them being motivated as well. That was what makes you motivated. I motivated strangers in a pool. And here's the ironic thing about that. And I was the least capable, least, uh, I had the least ability in the house. I was the poorest performing person at the pool and I ignited that motivational, that thing that happened in the pool that day to people that were more skilled at what I was doing than I was. It's not about talent and it's not about skill. It's about commitment. It's about being all in on something, on an idea, on an ideal, on a mission, on a quest. It's magical. It's magical, my friends. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you for letting me, uh, indulging me on this Tune Up Tuesday. I hope it gave you something to think about. More importantly, I hope it gave you something to be about. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, re I'm gonna end this with a new invention. I'm gonna do a reverse commercial. I'm not gonna advertise something for you to buy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the paying. So I'm a, I, I started this um, challenge about going for it and getting at it and it's all built around using um, advanced nootropics to light your brain up with mental energy so you can think clear, be clear, have that missing inner fire. So I'm gonna officially launch my personal challenge towards the end of this week. But if you come across this and the story resonates with you or the idea of getting lit up and going for something going on in, technology is, as this is 40 years later than when I did it before, we can use technology to help jumpstart the stuff in your mind to get you there. I can send you samples. All I need is your address. So that that's my pay it forward, pay it back for tuning into this. Don't put it in the, don't put your public information in the um, in the feed. Just direct message me if you're interested. If you're interested, I'll send it to you. No strings attached. I just will send you. I'll send you. I'll send you. Uh, it's called brain reimagined. I just will send it to you. I'll send you like a week's worth. You. Here's what I'd ask you to do though, when you try it under the influence of an enlightened brain of having all that clarity and focus, sit down and be serious about putting a plan together and going for something. And then stick to whatever you come up with because the clarity, man, the, the relationships, the things you're gonna put together, that insights, that it's, it's most likely gonna be different, right? That's the plan you're gonna wanna work. You're gonna work the plan. I call it the greater you dare to you. That's what I'm kind of calling this whole challenge thing is we just getting this thing kicked off, but I'm super excited about it because, you know, I'm a big, big proponent of the impact of mental energy, focus, awareness, perspective, insight. All those things are so much in my center of the bullseye of who my core is. I'm excited about that. So that's my offer for you. And I saved it to the end. So only the people that watched this whole thing would know what the offer is. But it, it's a reverse commercial, which means it's it's free to you. <laughs> it costs me. I will send you a week's worth of samples uh, for the amount that I have on hand. Now I have, I have, I got extra. I ordered extra, but this isn't like this ongoing thing. Like a, a ton of people see this and everybody asks. At some point I'm going to run out. Um, but up until the point I run out, I will do that. So the people that are seeing this first, you're first in line. All I need is for you to, eat, um, uh, what do you call it? I am me or, or connect your, your mailing address and I'll drop you a week's worth, five, a five days worth supply of brain reimagining and you can get that brain lit up, go for, make your own plan, put it all together and you can go for it. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Tune Up Tuesday. I made it on Tuesday. Um, that was a profound moment for me as you can probably tell, um, that changed fundamentally who I was. A, it's almost like a baptism of sorts. One person went in the water and a whole different person got out of the water. And I was literally transformed, for sure. And that person is still resonant in today's person. Um, it's fundamental to today's person. So. So that's my Tune Up Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out so long, and I hope you guys are having a great week. And if I remember, 
<laughs> I, will, I will see you next week, next Tuesday. You guys take care. Hey, Jeff Mack. Hey, Camilo. Stancil, Daryl, a lot of people tuned in. Okwasi Taha. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I have quite a few profound life-altering stories that completely radically changed my direction, who I was. Maybe I'll share a couple of these before. And I think I'm going to do these tune-up Tuesdays until maybe quarantine is over, right? And then, because I, then I start traveling a lot and I won't have the time and I have an office. I don't do these when I'm surrounded with people in my office, but it's easy when you work from home. I just, I can do whatever, I can do this and not have people like, well, all in my, all in my beeswax, right? <laughs> all right, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hope you guys are having a great week. Hope you're making the best of this time. Remember, we're going to look back on this time, this bump in the road as one of the single most unique time in the history of man, of us, of civilization, that you had to retool, refocus, reinvent, upgrade, up version up yourself. Because when we get back to normal, a lot of people are going to be back on that treadmill, huffing and puffing, just trying to stay up with their day. And they're not going to have this time to reevaluate and come up with a life strategy and learn new skills and start that side hustle and do all these things. Now's the time to be going get it. Jump in the pool. Jump in the metaphorical pool and non-metaphorically be all in. Be all in AF. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great week.